All right, I'm going to walk through a couple of example problems for balancing chemical equations. Uh, we're going to start with the thermite reaction that we already discussed the formatting of the chemical equation, and we're going to now balance it. So the atoms are equal on the reactants and the product side for each of the elements. Uh, so looking at this, um, I can see that uh, my oxygen is in just one reactant and product, same with my iron and my aluminum. Uh, so it doesn't really matter where I start, but I, I'm going to start with my iron. Uh, so I have two iron on my product or reactant side, and I have one iron on my product side. So to balance this out, I'm going to focus on the one that has the least atoms, which is the product side. I'm going to ask the question, what can I multiply that iron atom by to equal the number of iron atoms in my product? Or, or sorry, my reactant. Uh, and so that number is going to be two. Uh, two times one iron will equal two iron. So I'm going to put that two here as my coefficient. So that coefficient applies to just the chemical formula following it, and it multiplies all of the atoms that are in there. So it distributes out. In this case, there's just one atom iron. So there's now two iron atoms. All right, let's do aluminum next. Um, in my product side, I, or in my reactant side, I have one aluminum. And then I have two aluminum in my uh, product side. Uh, so this is pretty similar. I'm, I'm going to focus on the one that has the least, which is the reactant side this time. And I'm going to choose a coefficient that when I multiply my number of aluminum atoms will equal that of my product aluminum atoms. So uh, two times one aluminum will give me my two aluminum. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that two as my coefficient uh, in front of my aluminum. All right, so now my aluminum and my iron are both balanced. I'm going to focus on my oxygen. Uh, so looking at my reactant side, I have three oxygen, all right? Looking at my product side, I have three oxygen. And so that's just this coefficient right here. And uh, that, and there's no uh, coefficient. So that just means it's one. So it's like three times one. Uh, so they're already balanced. Uh, and that sometimes happens. And it's really, really nice when you're like, oh, cool. It's already done for me. And so that's it. That's my balanced chemical equation. If I wanted to rewrite it, uh, I would write it as iron O3 solid. Sorry, iron 203. Uh, so iron oxide plus my two aluminum solid forms two iron plus uh, my one aluminum oxide. There we go. All right, our next one is uh, C8H18. Uh, that's actually octane. That is uh, the fuel a lot of us use in our cars. Uh, so octane plus oxygen is going to form carbon dioxide and water. This is actually a combustion reaction. Uh, so we're going to, this one's going to be higher numbers, right? Because I'm, I'm seeing eights and 18s. Um, and I'm going to now try to have to pick what's the best place to start. I can see that both carbon and hydrogen are both in just one of my reactants and one of my products, but the oxygen is in one reactant and two products. So it's going to be a little harder to balance. Uh, and that's just because if I change the coefficient on the product side in front of either of my compounds, uh, when I'm trying to balance my oxygen, it will, uh, like affect all, right? Like it'll, it'll change the total to the product side. So in these cases, it's usually best. Um, and it usually works out this way that you want to focus on balancing the oxygen, um, with a coefficient change in front of, uh, something that has only oxygen in it. So I think it's best to start with the carbon here. Uh, so I have eight carbon on my reactant side and I have one carbon on my product side, because I don't have a subscript following that carbon atom right here. So that means there's just one. Uh, so uh, I need to figure out how to balance this. I'm gonna focus on the side with the least number of carbons. Uh, and if I can do eight times one carbon, that should give me eight carbon. So I'll put a coefficient of eight in front of my CO2. Now that eight distributes out, so it'll it'll also affect the total oxygen I have. 
All right, next up, I'm going to do hydrogen. I've got um, 18 hydrogen on my reactant side, and I have two hydrogen on my product side. Again, I focus on the side with less. Uh, so I need to think about what times my two hydrogen will equal 18 hydrogen. So it's balanced on both sides. Uh, so that's going to be a nine. So nine times two should be 18. Uh, if you're feeling stumped on this, you can always do the 18 divided by two. That would equal nine. So I'll put that coefficient up by my water. Uh, and again, that nine affects the number of hydrogen I have. Now, instead of two, I have 18. It also affects the number of oxygens that I have. So now that I have all of my more straightforward elements balanced, the carbon and the hydrogen, now I'll work on the oxygen. See, with each time I balance the carbon and then when I balance the hydrogen, it changed the number of total oxygens that I had on my reactant or my product side. Um, and so that's why trying to balance them earlier would uh, mean I just balance them again later. Kind of like with the hydrogen and the oxygen. We first balanced the hydrogen and they were balanced. We're like, great, we're done. But once we balanced our oxygen atoms, it meant that we had to go back and change how we had balanced our hydrogens. So let's take our totals. So on the reactant side, I have two oxygen. And on the product side, I'm going to need to do a little bit of adding and multiplying to figure this out. So I have from my CO2, I have two oxygen in my CO2 molecule. That's coming from my coefficient right here. And I'm multiplying that by my coefficient eight. That's going to equal 16 oxygen. That's just from the carbon dioxide. I'm then going to so this is all going to add up to uh, the amount I have for my water. I have one oxygen, and that's the coefficient. Uh, and I have, I'm going to multiply that by nine. I'm sorry. The one was the subscript. There's no subscript, so it's one. The nine is the coefficient. So I'm going to have a total of nine oxygen. Uh, so I'm going to need to add these up. Uh, so 16 plus 9 is going to equal 25 oxygen on my product side. And it's pretty different. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to focus on the side that is the least. Uh, luckily, on the reactant side, I have only oxygen, the element, uh, and so when I balance out these 25 oxygen on the product side, I won't affect the number of carbon or the number of hydrogen. So I won't have to go back and rebalance everything. So I need to figure out something. I'm going to call it X or I'll call it question mark times my two oxygen needs to equal 25 oxygen. So kind of solving this algebraically, this I would divide both sides by two. So really, I'm going to need uh, 25 divided by two oxygen. I put the fraction up. I mean, this is the same as saying 12.5, um, right? But I can't have half of an atom. Like I can't cut them in half. I can't create them. I can't destroy them. They're like the fundamental building blocks of the universe. So can't have half of one. So that means that I, I can't have half of this oxygen molecule either, really. So I'm going to need to solve this in a way that doesn't have anything with a decimal. I need whole numbers for my coefficients only. Uh, so to solve this problem here, I am going to multiply everything by two. And this is an algebra trick that we can use in chemistry. Um, and this is as complicated as you would see balancing a chemical equation. I just want to show you what it looks like if you're faced with a hard one. Um, and so this two is going to distribute out to each and every one. I'm going to do this in a different color, actually, of my coefficients. on the reactant and the product side. And so when I do that, I'm gonna get two 
instead of one in front of my octane, I'll get 25 um, because the twos will cancel out or 12.5 times two is 25. I'll get 16 for my CO2 and I'll get 18 for my oxygen. So rewriting this is going to look big. <laughs> These are big numbers, which when you're first doing this will seem terrifying because um, it's hard to know what's a reasonable number or not. And in this case, a reasonable number is a whole number for our coefficients when we're balancing an equation. And also one where you can't divide all of the numbers by another one, like two, and get more, still get a whole number ratio. So this will be two octane plus 25 oxygen, that's a gas, are going to form 16 carbon dioxide molecules in the gas state plus 18 water molecules in the gas state. And now that's finally balanced. And that's harder than you'll be using doing in your homework. I wanted to show a really challenging one as an example.